I think that any new designer or brand should compete on From Pencil to Production. And not only am I going to tell you why, but you're also going to hear it from former contestants and judges. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I am a digital fashion educator teaching digital fashion design and communication through my company, 383 Design Studio, as well as as an adjunct professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology. Now, normally I talk about digital fashion design on this channel, but I also like to talk about being a designer in the fashion industry and owning a fashion brand. And if you've been following me for a while, whether here or even on other social media platforms, you've heard me talk about our fashion business competition from pencil to production. Yes, ultimately it becomes a series on YouTube and you can watch our previous seasons right now. But what was always most important to me was to have contestants who were serious about starting or growing their fashion brands who really needed to understand better what it takes to do that so that they could build a business that could support them and their families, not just be a side hustle. Creativity is not enough for your fashion business to succeed. It takes planning, strategizing, relationships with vendors, knowing what to say and what to ask for, how and when to negotiate, and more. And a lot of that is hard, even for a seasoned professional, let alone someone who has decided to start this brand and has no prior experience in the fashion industry. So having some guidance is essential, and that's where the competition becomes a tremendous asset. Your most expensive uh, overhead is, would be your um, all your raw material procurement, and um, and and sampling, you know, like paying the factory to, to sample, to um, execute your patterns, um, your corrections to your patterns. It's very hard to get people that only know numbers to understand your vision. Yeah, exactly. And and if you only rely on launching your company based on someone that knows numbers from a calculator to believe in what you do. It's gonna be an uphill battle. And it's gonna help you guys when, when it comes to your marketing, you know, and, and trying to figure out like how you can focus and you're not like, yep. you know, trying to include everybody in the world. Yep. Okay, niche. cause you're not talking to everybody in the world. Not right niche, now. Niche down, niche down. We have this amazing product and we have this amazing thing that we wanna sell and it looks good and it's great and it's shiny. But when you lift the hood up, it's like so disorganized and if you know if someone is going to invest in a company or even getting a grant or even getting a bank loan they're going to ask for certain paperwork and you need to have it readily available because just like you there are dozens of other people contacting those same contacting those same people for for investment so so my thing is just make sure you have like your 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 house in order i always think of mentoring as having a coach but you don't have to pay for it but i saw a post recently from aurora james founder of brother Vellies, that said you cannot mentor your way out of needing capital, <laughs> word. And what she meant by that is at some point you're going to need money to expand, to market, to do all kinds of things. So we also send you away with a thousand dollars cash prize, as well as additional ideas and suggestions on how to get more money and how to get creative if necessary to get things done. One of our judges, Davon Johnson, founder of Blue Life Media Group, in season one talked about how he pulled off launching his first edition of Blue Magazine with little to no budget. I will say, um, this just goes to you know, what Kate talked about. I had to lean on people I knew that had a skill set that I didn't to, to just launch this, this thing um, and get people who would believe or could believe in what we were producing to lend their sweat equity. Had not he had resources from studio to photographer to showrooms, I could not have uh, shot my first cover to then launch this, this publication that has been around at this point in June, it'll be, it'll be 15 years. So my first thing is, is tell you- I don't you think that. I've ever heard you give me credit for that. But yes, I shot the first I've cover. Given, mm -hmm. I've given Casey credit nonstop, but obviously when you can't pay people money, you must give them credit with words all the time. So that's- yeah. That's your currency back to other people is to constantly tell them, thank you. I appreciate you. 15 you years later and I still need to hear it. I couldn't, I couldn't do it without you. Like that's your currency, you know, back to them. Because so remember always, and that's, that's real talk, to thank the people who supported you when you had no money. So I think for, for you guys, the, the most important currency is, is your friendship, your honesty, your loyalty, um, and your humbleness, right? You have to be humble to know that like, no one has to help you. 
Not everyone is familiar with merchandising or how important it is. So that's also something that we share with our contestants. A lot of people ask the question, well, what is merchandising? And to be more specific, it's fashion merchandising that we're gonna speak about today because there are diff very different types of merchandising. And in my opinion, it really is the science behind um, how to design with money in mind. Like that's the short of it to me, but the more official definition of it all is really designing on purpose um, to make sure that you get the right product to the right person during the right time. There's also marketing, which is essential for any brand, but not always a creative person's strong suit. You think that it's a little bit easier because, you know, we use social media all the time, but it's definitely something that you really gotta make sure that you're well thought out and concise. And I like the creative side of it. Trying to stay up with, with social media, it has, has definitely been a challenge. I took a big part from Natasha with like marketing, mm -hmm. um, just trying to figure out a more creative way of, you know, putting out your clothes and, you know, having your clothes resonate with a group of people, like a certain niche of people, rather than you're appealing to the masses of people having a target audience. Design development is probably what is most fun to everyone, but there are nuances that not everyone is familiar with. Season one contestant Sean Coco talked about how his time on the show working with fellow contestant Molly Miller and the conversations we had during that episode pushed him to start thinking more about incorporating sustainable design details into his footwear brand. I remember Casey was talking about the sustainability um, and uh, how a lot of brands are moving towards that and reasons as to why a brand should be uh, should move towards sustainable product and um and so forth so i did learn you guys did a good job in terms of bringing in um you know people within the industry that really knows their stuff mm -hmm. um so i definitely took away a lot of knowledge industry knowledge uh from the competition which was really dope and then there are those benefits that help you in the realm of self-development several contestants talked about getting out of their comfort zone and being more comfortable in front of the camera and let me tell you, those of you who are about to establish your brand, people need to be able to connect with you. And one of the best ways to do that is through video. And real talk, even post pandemic, those Zoom events, Microsoft Teams meetings and online classes are not going to completely go away. So for a lot of contestants, this was a way for them to get more comfortable on camera and to get used to talking about their brands. I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of take me out of my comfort zone. I wanted to just kind of, you know, little, like I said, step out of my boundaries a little bit. Um, and also working with you and, you know, um, taking the classes that we took, it kind of just motivated me to, you know, to, to take that step. Hardest thing I would say for me personally was honestly just going out and presenting. So I think that was one of the hardest parts of being on the, the show was just explaining the art. The hardest thing about being on the show, honestly, it's, it's, it's just getting out of your head. Getting out of your head and really just going with the flow. Ultimately, you really got me to the next step because I feel like now I could really, I have a better sense of talking to people. Mm -hmm. being on camera even on social media i'm just like i've never been a social media person like i was just like take my picture of my stuff and be like you like it you don't i don't care <laughs> now, I, now i talk into my camera i'm like working out um you know designing for for my TikTok. okay i'm not going to keep harping on how great the competition is but the last question i asked all the former contestants that i talked to was if they would recommend others to participate and here's what they said i would 100 percent recommend it to fashion creatives creatives in general but fashion creatives yes i definitely would definitely recommend um whoever's looking to like i said kind of step out of their comfort realm and also uh, compete with uh, other high level individuals that kind of you know pushes your skills to the next level because you know as they say iron sharpens what's the phrase iron sharp sharpens iron, iron sharpens iron yep um i definitely would recommend uh professional production and honestly, I, I feel like anybody, any anyone with a business, anyone with a product to sell, I definitely think is definitely welcome on the show. Because again, you're outside of the creative and you're more into 
to the business. I truly cannot recommend this opportunity more. Like the information and the mentorship that I've gotten from being on From Puzzle to Production, I know it's truly gonna last a lifetime and has already shaped my business over the past year. It, it'll get you to, to where you wanna go. Thanks for watching today's video. If you are interested in competing in season three of From Pencil to Production, make sure you enter by Saturday, February 25th. That would be tomorrow at the time of this recording. And the link to the entry form is in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video and the competition information with anyone you think would be interested and could benefit. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.